Hi there and welcome to St Andrew's Midweek Reflections on Wednesday the 10th of March. I want to reflect on the reading we've been using this week in our joint Lent Reflections across the United Reformed Churches in Leeds. Um, We're reflecting on prayers of Jesus and this week uh, we were reflecting on a Bible passage that comes in the middle of Jesus' ministry. And I want to read it to you, but I want to read it to you uh, in a reflective way. So um, I'm inviting you to sort of imagine yourself into the scene. It takes place in Jerusalem. Um, If you can imagine the scene, it's just after Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem. And there's been the whole um, palm celebration with him riding into the city on a donkey and the triumphant procession. Um, there's been crowds everywhere waving palm branches and throwing the the coats on the road. Um, it's also not long after uh, Jesus has raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Um, and so there's an excited scene, but it, it's a turning point in Jesus' ministry in the, from the fact of he's now not very obviously not just sharing with um, the Jewish people, he's sharing with a much wider uh, scene and a much wider audience, if you like. Um, So imagine yourself in the crowds or uh, listening as Jesus speaks in this next passage, Um, because he meets people from further afield. They get referred to as Greeks, but basically it's why it's a turning point in Jesus' ministry is because not only has he reached that point where he's turning towards to face the cross and all that comes as a result of that and with that, um, but here the Greeks represent Gentiles, in other words, all those who are not of the Jewish background. Um, so this is a faith that opens up to the world. Jesus teach- is opening his teaching uh, to the whole world. So listen to this passage as I share it and um, try and picture the scene. Imagine what you see and hear in the busy streets of Jerusalem, the smells and sounds that uh, that affect your senses and your feelings. And what do you feel as you hear Jesus speak? Uh, he uses a famous phrase about a grain of wheat falling to the ground. Uh, and then he prays for those around him or he mentions praying for those around him so think on the scene um, as I share these thoughts uh, as I share this passage so I'm reading from the gospel of John uh, chapter 12 beginning at verse 20 now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said to him Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Rather than glorify your name, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. 
now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. So how can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness might not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. Like I say, this passage comes from the midpoint of the Gospel, a turning point. And we're in the middle of Lent. We reach that midpoint when we draw almost closer towards when we're closer towards Easter than we were from the beginning of Lent. And here John's Gospel, as I say, makes that transition. Not only to open Jesus' teaching to uh, a much wider community, the whole world, that's symbolically what these Gentiles, these Greeks, represent, uh, who asked to see Jesus, but also Jesus himself turning towards the cross. And it has been said that in this moment, um, Jesus offers the equivalent of a Gethsemane prayer, the prayer that he prayed on the night before his crucifixion in the Garden of Gethsemane, is here in its equivalent at John's Gospel. Jesus perhaps considers asking for an easier way. But here he says, no, I turn and face what is ahead of me. So as we reach the midpoint of Lent, as we turn towards Holy Week um, and draw closer towards Easter itself, how is this season of Lent going for you? I invite you this week to pray and to consider all that Jesus offered as he faced the cross, as he faced that final journey. Consider the things that struck you perhaps about that passage, things that you might want to pray about in the coming week. We heard that God had redefined those that might be referred to as his people, not just the Jewish people, but the whole world. So who should be welcomed? Well, everyone, of course. Perhaps you also noticed Jesus' humanity. That little question of doubt or angst or anguish about the way ahead. For me, that makes Jesus all the more human and all the more acceptable for me to walk alongside in my faith. It is a reminder why Jesus was sent to earth by God, to walk with humanity, to experience humanity, to be with humanity. And that's what we can take with us today. So how does having a God who experienced what we experience increase or affect your faith in him and your love for him. Think about how that transition moment for Jesus might be reflected in a transition moment for you. I want to close with prayer. And it's a prayer that draws on the feelings that maybe come out of that passage. But I do invite you to go back and read it again. John chapter 12, beginning at verse 20. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, you voiced your anguish to the Father as you turned to face the cross. And you welcomed those around you. 
invited them into your prayer. Help us to turn to you with all our emotions, that we may come closer to you, grow in our relationship with you, through your spirit, by your strength, and in your love, as we step forwards and journey closer to Easter. Amen. Thank you for listening. Good night. God bless.